you, Hilary. Let's start with the debate now. And of course, when one talks of certainty, what's lurking around is skepticism. So the first, the first question is, can we be certain of anything? And if so, what? And I'd like to start with Simon, please. <sighs> um, <laughs> I think, well, I've already said in my intro that I think we can be certain of lots of things. Uh, you can be certain about when the bus is coming. Um, and that's just an example. Um, I'd just like to pick up on some of the phrases Hillary used. Um, he said we can't uh, refer to, that language doesn't permit us to refer to stuff out there. Now, I presume that out there is metaphorical for something, because in the ordinary sense, we can certainly th refer to things that are out there. Um, I go sailing with friends, and if you go sailing, you pick up a nautical chart, and it tells you what's out there, quite literally, what's in front of your boat. And if you don't use the chart, and if you don't know what the symbols mean, you're going to get into a lot of trouble. So, uh, th there are symbols, they do manage to refer to what's out there, the rocks, for example, um, and we do know how to use them. So somehow language or symbolic representation pulls off this trick of putting us in touch with the world that's out there. Now Hillary might have meant, and perhaps this is um, I think a, a richer vein to explore, um, that we are in the position which really can't left us in, that we can know a lot about how things appear to us to be but we can't know the ding and zik, the thing in itself, the thing behind the appearances. And that's the idea of a kind of veil of perception or perception giving you only surface representations of the underlying reality. Now, whatever Kant thought, I think there's some evidence for this. After all, if you look at, say, um, uh, the salt on your table, uh, all, you, all you see is sort of white crystals. Um, what it, what's underneath, what in that sense is out there, is, for example, sodium chloride. But you may not know that. Nobody knew it until the development of chemistry in the 18th century. So it's something that takes patient investigation. But that investigation can be successful. Chemistry can tell us a lot about what's out there, uh, just as much as nautical charts can tell us what's out there. So I think be very careful of using the generalization what's out there as a suggestion of mystery. It needn't suggest mystery. It can suggest perfectly tractable problems whose solution gives us certainty about what's out there. Do you think that's certainty or approximately certain? And I, and I wonder whether that's your disagreement bet the hi between Hillary and Simon. I don't know. Um, I, I think it's bad philosophy unfortunately, as, as, as has been said already, perhaps suggested by Descartes, mm. to manufacture unreal doubts. Um, I think any doubt about whether the stuff on your table is sodium chloride would be quixotic. And un I mean, why waste your time on bizarre conjectures like that? Science fictions, as it were. And I don't really see why philosophers should prioritize that kind of rather, in a, in a sense, silly sort of doubt mm. when there's so much going for one story and so little going for any other. Hilary, is this where you're coming from? Is it that you're kind of using an extreme doubt or, or are you coming from a different perspective on this? Well, I, I'm not uh, motivated by the same, uh, same things that M Descartes was mm -hmm. being motivated. It's not I'm trying to reach some... Uh, some certainty in that sense because in fact my criticism of uh, philosophical realism is uh, more profound than that. Uh, Simon and I have had these uh, conversations uh, uh, over the years uh, and I've obviously had many conversations with philosophical realists. Uh, I think that you know I can point to the fact that um, uh, when I first put forward this uh, outlook that we should think of reality as being open, it was, it was quite out there uh, in a different meaning to the word that we previously used for out there. Um, uh, but I in recent time, 
uh, neuroscience, I would, ca it would argue, has moved in my direction. There are now um, a lot of neuroscientists across the globe in, uh, in prestigious universities who, who take the view that reality is, uh, what we take to be reality, is a function of how the brain is operating and the processes that are going on and a representation to ourselves, and it's not a representation of what's out there. Now, I am a great advocate of checking to see whether your way of holding the world works or not. So, in, a, in an odd sort of way, I'm an arch-rationalist. You know, I'm in the contemporary world, there are many aspects of it in this sort of postmodern space where people imagine that you can hold all sorts of views. You don't have to look very carefully about how they apply. And, uh, and there's a casual uh, attitude to empiricism and rationalism, indeed, uh, a, a criticism of it. But I, I, don't, I don't hold that view at all. I, I think that uh, we have to look very carefully at what we say and see whether the world uh, does um, operate in the light of holding it like that. So hold this framework, uh, work with it, and, and does it do uh, what it, it's, it's proposed to do? Does it enable you to intervene in the way that uh, it, it does? But uh, you shouldn't imagine that you've got to the end of it. There are going to be a whole load of other people who are going to come along with different ways of accounting for this. And the idea that, you know, if you look at a crystal of um, salt, that it is sodium chloride, I think is a mistake. Uh, I think that you can indeed see it as sodium chloride. That's the function of the periodic table, the way that we developed ke chemistry. Uh, it's very powerful. It's amazingly successful. It's an enormously powerful model. But there are many other ways of thinking of salt. Uh, it can be a great seasoning. And um, uh, perhaps different types of salt uh, generate uh, a better seasoning. And maybe you, it's more useful for you if you are a cook to think of it in terms of the vocabulary of seasoning rather than in the vocabulary of sodium chloride. And these different ways of holding the world um, are often not incompatible, of course. I'm not saying they are incompatible. Sometimes they are incompatible. But that doesn't matter, because what's going on is they are ways of holding the openness of reality. Thank you. I'm gonna, I would like to listen to hear uh, what Ruth has to say about that, or if you have any thoughts on yeah. what Hillary and I'm Simon are... I'm trying to digest what's happening here. Um, so <laughs> I just wonder what... So yes, of course. Salt can be understood as sodium chloride. It can be understood as seasoning or that magical ingredient to your pot roast or whatever. Of course, that's true. The question is whether the right way to understand all those claims I just made depend on this view in the seminar, right? The view in the seminar is the world is open, right? Or Sorry, I'm not going to, I don't know what your view about the natural is, but forget about, um, forget about the stuff in the seminar room. Right. I think both of these gentlemen agree that there are, you know, just common sense. So you can represent things in lots of different ways, and we want to be able to do things with our representations that meet our goals, allow us to flourish, and so on. Um, so I implore us to leave the idea of uncertainty or certainty in the seminar out of this discussion. What we should talk about is the kind of uncertainty that we face in our lives, the uncertainty with the small u, and try to figure out should we, you know, what kind of impact does that have on our lives? Should we try to pursue certainty in the kitchen? And if not, what should we be doing instead? Suppose you, uh, you're going to the hardware store, right? You're at the hardware store and you think, oh, did I leave the lights on in the house? And you're uncertain as to whether you left the lights on in the house. But then you start to replay, you're leaving the house. You oh, yeah, I think I might have switched them off. You can be what philosophers call practically certain that you turned off the lights in the house because with respect to what matters, right? The degree of credence you need in order to be certain, it depends on what turns on whether or not you left the lights on the house, okay? The bill will be a little bit higher, maybe you contribute to global warming. Right? That's very different than if you're contemplating 
Oh no, did I leave Junior in the car in the parking lot, right, with the windows rolled up? There you need a higher degree of credence in order to be practically certain that you didn't do that. So we can be certain, we can be practically certain about a huge number of things, and if we're not practically certain in this way, we can't get on in life. To continue watching this video, click the link in the top left or in the description below. Or visit iai.tv for more debates and talks from the world's leading thinkers on today's biggest ideas. For more debates, talks and interviews, subscribe today to the Institute of Art and Ideas at iai.tv.